in this lecture. I want to look at a very important principle of probabilistic reasoning known as the sure thing principle. But before we do that, I want to highlight some terminology that I'm going to use. On the one hand, I'm going to say that P is good evidence for Q given R. And on the other hand, sometimes I'll say P and R is good evidence for Q. Now, the exact relationship between these two phrases is going to depend on what exactly we mean by good evidence. But typically, when we talk about something being good evidence for something else, we're going to take a conditional probability. So that's very clear down here with P and R being good evidence for Q. We're going to be making some claim about the probability of Q given P and R. But what about the, the statement P is good evidence for Q given R? Well, it seems like what we're trying to do is to say, look at the probability of Q given P, but we're also conditioning it on R. So it looks like we want to say something like the probability of Q given P given that we're assuming R, but of course you can't take, you can't condition twice or said differently, conditioning twice really just is the probability of Q given P and R. So on the face of it, it looks like the P being good evidence for Q given R is just another way of saying P and R is good evidence for Q. However, like I said, this is going to depend on what exactly we mean by good evidence. If by good evidence we're talking about evidential support, then the two ways of phrasing it are going to turn out to say the same thing. P evidentially supports Q given R just means the probability of Q given P and R is greater than 0.5. But that's just to say that P and R evidentially supports Q. However, if we're talking about positive relevance, then there really is a difference. So P is positively relevant to Q given R is going to mean the probability of Q given P and R is greater than the probability of Q given R. Whereas if we were to say the P and R is positively relevant to Q, what we mean by that is just the probability of Q given P and R is greater than the probability of Q. So these two ways of phrasing P evidentially supports Q given R and P and R evidentially supports Q, those turn out to be just two ways of saying the same thing. However, that's not the case when we talk about positive relevance. P is positively relevant to Q given R means this inequality right here, but P and R is positively relevant to Q means a completely different inequality. Now what that means is that we can, there are going to be two versions of the sure thing principle. One is, if P is good evidence for Q given R, and P is good evidence for Q given not R, then P is good evidence for Q. So we have some proposition R, we don't know if it's true or not, so we use it to divide up the space. We first consider the situation given that R is true. We suppose that R is true and ask, is P good evidence for Q? Then we say, what about not R? Let's consider the not R situation. And we ask, is P good evidence for Q? If the answer to that question is yes in both cases, then we just conclude straight away that P is good evidence for Q. The unconditional sure thing principle says, if P and R is good evidence for Q, and P and not R is good evidence for Q, then P is good evidence for Q. Now, of course, whether or not these principles hold is going to depend on what we mean by good evidence. What exactly are we saying? Are we talking about evidential support or positive relevance? Now, it turns out that if by good evidence we mean evidential support, then the statement is true. If, in any stochastic truth table, if the probability of Q given P and R is greater than 0.5, and the probability of Q given P and not R is greater than 0.5, then the probability of Q given P must be greater than 0.5. However, as we'll see, 
the statement does not hold if we're talking about positive relevance. That is, we're going to find a stochastic truth table where the probability of Q given P and R is greater than the probability of Q given R, and the probability of Q given P and not R is greater than the probability of Q given not R, but it will not be the case that the probability of Q given P is greater than the probability of Q. So the statement involving evidential support, that version of the sure thing principle holds, but the statement involving positive relevance does not hold. So let's start with evidential support. So here's the statement. Give me any stochastic truth table. I'd like to know if it's the case that 1, the probability of Q given P and R is greater than 0.5, and 2, the probability of Q given P and not R is greater than 0.5, then is it the case that the probability of Q given P must be greater than 0.5? Well, number 1 here implies that the probability of Q and P and R must be greater than 0 0.5 times the probability of P and R. And 2 similarly implies that the probability of Q and P and not R must be greater than 0.5 times the probability of P and not R. Both of those follows from the definition of conditional probability. Now here we have two e inequalities, and what we can do is we can add both sides of those inequalities. So on the left-hand side here, we have the probability of Q and P and R plus the probability of Q and P and not R. Now, these two formulas, Q and P and R, and Q and P and not R, are mutually exclusive. This is because of the not R term, or the not R conjunct. There's no row of the truth table in which Q, P, Q and P and R, and Q and P and not R, are both true at the same time. So what that means is that the sum of these two probabilities is equal to the disjunction, the probability of the disjunction of those two formulas. So this is equal to the probability of Q and P and R disjunction with Q and P and not R. So the sum of the two equations on, or the two probabilities on the left-hand side is equal to the probability of Q and P and R disjunction with Q and P and not R. Now, Q and P and R disjunction or, or Q and P and not R is actually logically equivalent to Q and P. So Q and P is logically equivalent to Q and P and R or Q and P and not R. And this is just using the principle that phi is always logically equivalent to phi and psi disjunction phi and not psi. So here phi is q and p and psi is r. So the left hand side, the sum of the two terms on the left hand side is just equal to the probability of q and p. What about the right hand side? So this is going to be greater than, the sum, these, these, the sum of these two terms is going to be greater than 0.5 times now it's the probability of P and R plus the probability of P and not R. And again, P and R and P and not R are mutually exclusive. So this is going to be equal to 0.5 times the probability of P and R or or rather disjunction with P and not R. So this term right here, the probability of this disjunction, must be strictly greater than 0.5, the probability of this disjunction. And using the same principle up here, we see that this must be equal to 0.5 times the probability of P. Now 
So we get the probability of Q and P must be greater than 0.5 times the probability of P. But if we were to divide both sides by the probability of P, we see that the right-hand side, the probabilities of P cancel and you get just 0.5, but the left-hand side is the probability of Q given P. So assuming one and two, we're able to derive the probability of Q given P is greater than 0.5.